What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Hey y'all, how are you? So it's the first day of NaNoWriMo and I've spent a good portion of my day going through some things. I did write some November NaNoWriMo. It's still working on the artist way. I'm a week behind having that shingle shot and some of the other things just it's been yeah today is national authors so, day hey okay so i wanted to uh, i'm just gonna give you a snippet of what i've been working on for the introduction because it's kind of changed some since camp nanorama and i have written um right at 2300 words so far today's the second i'm about to take my macbook back in the house and uh get me a cup of hot cocoa or a cup of hot apple cider i'm probably gonna fix me and my mom like maybe some soup and a sandwich or something because it's getting kind of late <laughs> which is par for the course with nanorama but I tony morrison said if there's a book that you want to read but it hasn't been written yet then you must write it started out the introduction with that you'll know why very soon if you don't already dear okay hello creative souls i think i need to put dear because i have hello twice that's yeah that that's not good okay dear creative souls hello and welcome i am so glad you've chosen to be here to include this book as part of your creative journey i hope that you will find this book an inspiration and gain from it what i wish had been out there when i began my journey down the rabbit hole of what i call creative journaling but others have called illustrated journaling, document life journaling, creative artistic bullet journaling, or omni journaling, or visual journaling, or art journaling, or even life journaling. The label is just that, a label. That is, it went on to So I'm going to make a note in parentheses. Need to fix sentence because I don't edit while I'm in. I, I make marks in my book. And when it comes to journaling, there are no rules. No journal police. There is no right way or wrong way to journal, just your own way. What works for you. Within the pages of this book, you'll find my recommendations for tools and supplies, my thoughts on various mediums and styles, as well as a few tips and tricks. But what you won't find are rules. One of my greatest joys is the freedom of self-expression with the blank pages of a journal. Whether I am combining words and art, or just writing, or just creating art, I am expressing myself. My thoughts, ideas, feelings, bits about my day, or what is going on in the world, are just a quote and a doodle. My journaling story. It all began with a small pink diary with a lock and key that I received for Christmas from my father, 1974. My father, and in the parentheses I have Don Burgess died April 4th, 1975, and I began using that pink diary to write him letters. Each entry began with Dear Daddy. It was my way of staying in touch with him, my way of grieving and healing. I learned at a young age that creativity was cathartic and that journaling was healing, but it wasn't till I was in middle school that my journal pages began to be more on the creative side. By high school, I was adding what I now know to be everyday ephemera, but back then I just called stuff from life i guess i should probably put life stuff we'll see things like tags receipts wrappers packaging gift tags name tags maps pictures Did I write pictures twice? No, I didn't. Okay. tags receipts wrappers packaging gift tags name tags maps pictures postcards birthday and or christmas cards fortunes from my fortune cookies ticket stubs pamphlets brochures newspaper clippings comic strips magazine pictures and or articles i could go on but i think you get it i tried different diaries spiral bound notebooks binders with loose leaf paper composition notebooks fancy journals from bookstores i preferred the composition notebook unless one of the fancy journals had white paper i'm not a fan of cream paper i still love composition books but i prefer to use them for things like morning pages research notes anything that is text heavy but once i began adding things like watercolor markers what people refer to as wet media i soon realized that if i wanted to use watercolor or markers i would either need to double the pages glue two pages together so it could handle the wet media or be extremely careful with how much water I used when watercoloring. Now you could also put gesso on there. And I can't remember if I added that in a different place, but we'll see. 
<laughs> or be extremely careful with how much water I use when watercoloring. I can't tell you how many pages of paper I've rubbed holes into or pilled the paper so much so that it look, looks textured, not in a way I meant to either. We'll get to all of that in future chapters. Around a decade ago, I fell down the YouTube journaling and planning communities. I fell down the journaling and YouTube communities. Rabbit holes. Learned about Hobonichi planner journals. They're a hybrid of sorts with the most amazing paper, but that's a whole other story. At that time, I couldn't afford a Hobonichi. I couldn't afford the postage, much less, much less the journal. But like me, others were finding... There's no but me yet. There's but. Okay, but others were finding ways to create their own Hobonichi-style journal planner that they were calling a Fobonichi. Uh, stop editing. I tried using what I had. Then I went to Michael's, the only craft type store we had. I also tried Staples and ended up getting a few different types of notebooks. Finally, I ordered a notebook called a Miguel Ruiz, which had paper that was similar to composition notebook paper. Some have better papers than others, depending on where they're made. But the paper was grid and it was an A5. The whole journal size thing is almost a chapter in and of itself. But we'll go over more in the chapter about supplies. I tried it, but like the other notebooks I tried, I found the paper pilled and I just couldn't seem to get the hang of watercoloring on that kind of paper. Not then. Just when I was about to give up, a friend named Yukari told me about these notebooks called Seven Seas by a company called Nanami Paper. They had a notebook with blank Tomo River paper, the same kind of paper that is in the Hobonichis. What? Blank? My handwriting tends to slant, no matter how much I've tried, how many different ways or things I've tried, but there are writing boards to help you with that, so I gave it a try. I loved it. I still have that notebook. It was the game changer. Later on, Nanami Paper would come out with a new notebook in their Seven Seas lineup called The Crossfield, which is the very notebook I'm using to handwrite parts of this book. I met so many great people in the journaling and planning, and planning communities. I heard such great advice, but I did find that some of the advice was contradictory. Which colored pencils should I buy? What color watercolor is best to learn with? What pens work best if you're going to watercolor over it? I had so many questions, but I had a hard time finding answers to some of my questions, not because there weren't answers, but because the answers were varied depending on the person. Like I said earlier, there are no rules, no right way or wrong way to journal. So what works great for one person may not be great for someone else. I was on a budget, so the thought of spending over a hundred dollars for a 72 count of Derwent ink tense pencils horrified me. My whole budget spent on one tin of pretty pencils. My whole budget for the month. My whole stationary budget for the month spent on one tin of pretty pencils. Actually, that was not a, a month. That was a season. Yeah, because we were very limited back then. I understand now why I was given the advice that if I were going to get them, I should go ahead and get the 72 count. Once you start using them, you'll want all of them was what I think I was told. A decade later, and I still do not have the 72 count of those pencils. I have two different tens. One is a UK 12 count and the other is a US. I have found, for me personally, that the 24 to 48 count for colored or watercolor pencils is a good variety. I probably ought to put that I barely use my ink tense pencils. I do like them, but I don't find that I need them very often. And now that John gave me the little Derwent watercolor pan set. I kept wishing there was a book about the creative type of journaling that I was doing that people called Fobonichi, Fobonichi journaling. I wanted a how-to resource that I could refer to whenever I had questions, only there wasn't one. Sure, there were books about art journaling, but that's more mixed media type journaling. The kind of journaling I was doing wasn't mixed media so much as a mixture of regular textile journaling, scrapbooking on a much smaller scale, sketching and painting on a smaller scale, and a bit of diary style journaling. In my mind, it was being more creative in my journal, a bit of this and a bit of that, a bit of this and a bit of that. What many people refer to as documenting life using words and art, and the art bit could be anything from illustrations or photos or collage and or ephemera. There wasn't a label that people agreed on for that type of journaling. I'm still not sure if there is an agreed upon label the closest things I've heard of are omni journaling or illustrated journaling. Some people do call creative journaling creative journaling, but I've also heard things called creative journaling that are still mixed media. I might have to add some more to that section later. 
What is a creative journal? Being creative in your journal. What, what is, is a creative, a creative journal? journal? A journal you're creative in. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? Are you ready? Let's get creative in our journals. Or should I say, let's learn to get creative in our journals. Or let's practice getting creative in our journals. Let's get started. Being creative in our journals. It's hard to do this without editing. To make it whatever she put her mind to Late night hours up the hill Serving coffee to strangers That coffee is so good. Yeah, I had the heart monitor. I'm supposed to wear it for a week. I got it Friday morning. I wanted to kind of update things. It's chilly around here. I am working on the novel for NaNoWriMo. I am, because of that, thinking rethinking going over and looking at journal entries from past journals thinking about the different things that have to do with creative journaling in and of itself all different kinds of things about creative journaling from the pens and pencils and uh, different wet media different dry media the different kinds of papers the different kinds of journals the different sizes so i have this like staples gift card and i wanted to put some washi on it to go in the journal y'all the more that i have thought about things the more i'm like i'm still doing the artist way too so this is my notebook this is one of Bree's covers and uh, I had gotten this cover for July because, you know, July I always do like some kind of ocean kind of thing. This is the mermaid. And I, I want to say this like it's a teal kind of So in here I have my morning pages journal. Hey, how you doing? It's Burgess Taylor. I have been working on NaNoWriMo. I got the video done for Patreon and it took forever for it to upload. I have been working on my creative journaling book for NaNoWriMo. I did not sign up on the NaNoWriMo website. I am keeping track of my word count. My goal is to write every day and to write at least 1,500 words every day. That does not equate 50,000 words, but it does come pretty damn close. There are going to be some days when I actually write a lot more, and then there'll be days when I don't write quite that much. However, this is a nonfiction novel, and I'm also doing some journaling and some art and stuff, so I figured that makes up for the difference for the 167 words. I've been handwriting and writing in Scrivener, and I'm going back and forth, and I'm adding in the number of the words that I'm putting in the written book, the handwritten book. Th that's actually just ideas and thoughts, and I'm, I'm trying to formulate things, so when I get on the computer I'm looking at that and I'm actually putting it into a coherent thing that process of handwriting things and then putting into the computer in a more I'm just gonna say that what's in my notebook very much a shitty first draft like Hemingway said a first draft of everything is a piece of shit what I'm doing for that is working pretty well the other thing that I'm doing is studio stuff the stand for my mini fridge which is not so many it's short but it's pretty deep and my microwave and I'm not sure about the Keurig the Keurig may end up going elsewhere but or the microwave might end up going elsewhere and the Keurig and the coffee stuff may end up going above the fridge. I am not going to be able to do all of what I need to do in here by myself. Part of what I thought I'd talk about today and kind of update you on are some of the things that I'm doing for NaNoWriMo. You know, I'm creative pretty much in every single journal and the planners and everything. However, one of the things that, that has really made me take a step back and go, hmm, is as I'm writing this book, I'm thinking about these things and I'm like, okay, um, I used to do this stuff. This is what I, I used to practice this stuff. This used to be part of my everyday norm. It used to be part of my everyday journaling. And as things have changed, uh, because I've tried a number of different things. NaNoWriMo, I am writing the creative journaling book, a how-to for creative journaling. And on my coffee chat that I just put up on Patreon, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, it took over 24 hours for it to upload. One of the things that sort of inspired me about the creative journaling book years ago in 
the end of 2014 and all throughout most of 2015, I was actively participating in the Fobonichi journaling group. I think there was more than one of them. There were two of them. I think there's only one now. I fell down the rabbit hole of Hobonichi's and the Standard and the Crossfield and the writer from Nanami Paper, the Seven Seas series. I also fell in love with the Taroko Design Enigma, which is the 68 GSM dot grid Tomo River paper. He has the cream and the white. I prefer the white. I d I'm not a fan of cream paper. So I fell in love though with Tomo River paper. And before all of that, I tried several different kinds of notebooks from Moleskines and Fabriano inserts and all kinds of different things. That Miguel Ruiz, that Miss Vicky B showed all of us. But I tried a lot of different things. And Moleskine used to be really good. Uh, however, I'm still, I'm just not a fan of cream paper. A lot of people were doing some of that in the Loistrum, you know, in the creative bullet journaling kind of thing. I tried Loistrums and they're good notebooks, but I don't like cream paper. So as I was delving though into this life journaling kind of thing, because for me, what I kept seeing everywhere was more or less the documenting your day on those daily pages in the Hobonichis are the Fobonichis. Some people did add a bit of to do, some planning or whatever they combined, but a lot of what I saw in the very beginning, I watched and I loved the documenting part of the documenting your day, documenting your life on those daily pages. And I wanted so badly a Hobonichi cousin. I couldn't afford a Hobonichi cousin. I tried what I could and I, so I did the Fobonichi journaling kind of thing. Suffice to say, the more that I experimented with different things and the more that people were talking about different things and the more that I learned, the more I knew I needed to learn. The questions that I asked, people had all these different answers to. It really depended on the person. It depended on what your preferences were. It depended on a lot of different things. And one of the things that kept being reiterated over and over and over again by certain people was that, look, hey, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. Just do what you want to do. Do what you need to do. Do what you like. But I didn't know what I liked in some ways. Okay, so this is my morning pages journal. And this is a documented journey cover. This is the mermaid. This is the, the wavy pocket. And on the inside, I have the teal. And then there's black felt back here. And this is an A5. I love this. There's usually a pen in that front pocket. So this is my actual journal. This is my, my writer bullet journal, my writer journal. As you can see, I'm adding stuff in here. So all you need, the creative spark. And I wrote what you, you like. So you need a pencil or a pen, a notebook. This had something back here and I, I just put a piece, a little piece of paper and then the little Snoopy comic strip. I haven't used anything really in the index yet. I will get to that. This is my faux cover. These are things I'm working on. Every year I struggle when I sign up on the website to get it into the computer. I'm busy writing. Part of this, I am handwriting. And then I'm putting it into Scribner on my MacBook. I don't want to be so worried about the computer part of it that I am upsetting and stressing myself out when I don't need to. I don't need any more stress, y'all, uh, or anxieties. I'm keeping up with my word count. This is some information that I wrote down. These are some notes to myself, like what is creative journaling? This is a quote. I've actually already like talked about a lot of this. Part of my introduction, but I have changed uh, some of the introduction. What I have in the computer now is different. So we are getting why creative journaling. These are the benefits of creative journaling, which most of my journals are powerful tools for self-care, self-development, self-love. They are healing, life-changing, and transformative. They are poetry, writing, and last but not least, we all have a story to tell. Journaling is a way to tell our own story. Since my journals are for self-expression, documenting ordinary life, current events, my creative practice, ideas, mental health, learning, discovery. We could also put exploration. I don't know if I want that word. And working through things like anxiety, grief. And then I've got finished the sentence, which I think I did. And this is pretty much the chapters. I may rename some of these. It's because there is no right way or wrong way to journal. There isn't a right way or a wrong way necessarily to be creative in your journals. So some days I'm not capable of doing all the things. Some days I, I know what I need to do. 
I know what my instructions for myself are, but I don't always do them. I still have to put my stuff there. I've got something, I just haven't put it there yet. So these are all the survival and prep kind of stuff for NaNoWriMo. I showed that. So this is the quote by Toni Morrison that is part of my introduction. If there's a book that you want to read, but it hasn't been written yet, then you must write it. That is the whole reason I decided that there needed to be a book about creative journaling because there wasn't one. I kept wishing that there was like this how-to. So I've got to fix some stuff here. I don't have everything here, but I do have my word count. I don't have today's word count. So I'm up to 3,899 words as of last night. And a lot of what I'm doing though is writing section, like I'll write for a while. And so that'll be like 500 and something words. And then I'll write again and that'll be like six or 700 words. You know, it depends because I'm writing at different periods of time. I've got all kinds of stuff in here. The creative is the place where no one else has ever been. You have to leave the city of your comfort and go to the wilderness of your intuition. What you discover will be wonderful. What you'll discover is yourself. Alan Alda. I have quite a bit of quotes in different places. Okay, so this is the actual journal that I'm using as my creative journal while I do this. It, I'm writing out a lot of the things by hand. I'm actually writing bits and pieces and notes. I have literally surrounded myself with all the inspiration and prettiness that makes me feel happy, invigorated, and constantly creative. Holly Stinnett. I'm doing this the way that I do my creative journals when I set it up to be a creative journal, anything and everything. I don't really put to-dos in my creative journaling unless I need to. I have a planner for that and I am creative in the planner. This is more of like an index of important things that are going on. I will go back in and fill this in. So I have, I have this and then I, I created this because this is what got me. I've been keeping a journal of some kind since I was seven and I'm 56 years old. So it, journal, that says knowledge, that says make it your own, this is creative, this is motivation, this is dream, this is practice mindfulness, and that says life book. That's from one of the little Hobonichi things. This says, and the air was full of thoughts and things to say, but at times like these, only the small things are ever said. And then this says, I want to keep or lose them. I have no idea what that was about, but I liked it, you know? So I'm gonna keep or lose things as I go through this process. So this is a swatch of some of the markers. As I ascend the stairs to my studio, I leave the hustle and bustle of the world behind and enter a creative wonderland. Now this is a picture, her hands are right here, a little cup of coffee, she's got a pen. These are journals stacked in a window and you can see out the window, trees, nature, bush, something like that. She's sitting at her desk and she's journaling. I love this. And this, I got this from Mitt. I think it was in one of the stationary selection boxes. Love it, she's sitting at a desk and she's like thinking. And then this is the pen, cause this was a piece, this is like this. So I added these here. So anyway, the coffee journal, this was gonna be my commonplace journal. And I put this in there and then I was like, you know what? I already have a commonplace journal. I left journal. this in here because this is the kind of thing that I am putting in creative journals. A commonplace, it is one of the creative journals that I use. I decided when I'm doing this, the creative journal, I'm gonna have all of the creative bits in it, whether it's a commonplace journal or documenting my life and ink smeared across things out. This is real life, y'all. So I thought I was printing this on vellum and ended up printing on my sticker paper so I just put it down. I've got the number of words. Dear creative soul, hello and welcome. And I've got a lot of writing because this was my brainstorming session of writing my introduction. All the things that I thought about when I started thinking about creative journaling. If there are things on your mind, events in your life you want to remember, art you'd like to create, ordinary and or extraordinary life things you'd like to chronicle or if you're an experienced journaler but you'd like to start adding illustrations and our everyday life ephemera to your journals and are you just want to uh, be more creative in your journal this book is for you if you could have your journals tell your story the life story of your day then how creative do you think you'd feel how inspired would you feel the best way to start being creative in a journal is to just start with you and your thought what kind of coffee am i drinking did i exercise your story matters remember your story deserves a place in those pages documenting your journey via your creativity is the journaling of you and your story i ended up rewriting some bits of it and then some bits of it i haven't created this in my notebook with a regular pencil and a fine liner and then i started writing 
writing down things like so this part was 917 words okay so i need in the computer where i have scrivener i'm like i need a transition from the intro to the actual chapter one the section that i've written in chapter one it's about paper it's about notebooks and the different kinds of paper and the different kinds of notebooks and journals and sizes and then the next section is pens well before the paper and the pens sections i need to put a bit of writing so that there's this transition from the introduction to chapter one because chapter one is sort of chapter one is getting started so i wrote because this says then the paper section so for paper i had written down the things that i needed to make sure that i covered wet media watercolor markers sprays watercolor pencils stamps acrylic paint gouache inks bindings the spine it's important do you want glued or ver or stitched because stitched if you're adding any kind of wet media is the best or unless you want rings or spiral or something everybody has their own preference i like bound and i like stitched do you want maybe tomo river paper and the different the two different or three different kinds <laughs> because there's all different kinds now maybe you want sketchbooks or a sketchbook journal or maybe you want to make your own out of say mixed media paper a fancy journal from a bookstore or a stationery store so then i've got pens and like this is acid free and i've got pigment liners so we've got microns faber castell i've got waterproof water soluble sharpies this is the sizes of the notebooks i guess i should put a circle around this fountain pens and ink ballpoint pens gel pens fine liners you need jet stream multi thing so then this is the basics this is chapter one and i wrote the basics because this is what i need to put in that's the transition and this is in that writer's blood ink from diamond i've got to fill my fountain pen as a matter of fact it's it's gotten low i've got the amount of words in different places and i kind of circled things i did this want to say this is on watercolor paper and i did this and i did some washi tape consider this a handbook for keeping a creative journal a creative journal is a way to chronicle your journey the journey of your life in a creative way why do you want to keep a journal specifically a creative journal how did you find out about creative journaling i'm hoping that one of these answers has to do with inspiration i love journaling why do i love journaling very idea of that first clean blank page can be quite scary intimidating what if i mess it up what if i make a mistake it'll ruin the journal what do i write about what if someone reads it these are a lot of the common questions and concerns that people want the answers to so let's start here rembrandt used a quill pen words worth fill your paper with the breathings of your heart this is part of my writing that i did today what do you put in a creative journal writing doodling drawing and painting poetry short short stories, essays, fiction, nonfiction, and then I could put other things because there's watercolor stuff that I, no matter how many journals we fill, there is something magical and yet daunting at the same time about the blank page. Some suggest turning the page to not start on that first page. Others suggest putting a mark on the page so it's not perfect. And yet others suggest writing a quote. I do not believe there is a one size fits all. I think that you have to find a bit of inspiration that will help you get your creative juices flowing and figure out what would work best for you on the first page of a journal. So see, like this is that odd first page. I don't have anything on it. I may end up going back later and putting something on it. Here, I made a collage. This came from this book that somebody had sent me years ago that had uh, articles about journaling and creativity and art. Maybe it was the flow book. I think it might have been the act, not the flow magazine, but one of the flow books. And this came from something else. I think that came from a book about the people who did the fabric purses and totes and travel bags and wallets. And I can't think of their name uh, like a decade or so ago. The, the, a lot of Paisley. But I think this came from that book. I found that book at Dollar Tree and I have used a bunch of that stuff, a bunch of stuff from that book for ephemera this is just vellum and i may end up creating my own vellum for now i have this in there created this this came from one of my breathe magazines like i said this came from mitts these came from wherever all different kinds of books and magazines and stuff this came from the hobonichi little booklet this is washi tape like i could have put this on that first page i could have put something like this on that first page because that first page in a journal is always wonky because of the the way that they like this is a stitch bound but they do have this tiny bit of adhesive right here see the stitching you can see the stitching so that's one of the things i also talk about i did this but i haven't watercolored it yet i'm going to watercolor this i created like faux washi tape so i, I thought well this is really cool here we go 
so for different supplies, this is one of the things that I'm going to be talking about, like with markers. I've got Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen brush box of them and some of the, and I've got the set of black ones and I've got the set of white ones and I've got the set of the skin tone. When you think about creative journaling, for me anyway, what I'm thinking about is all the different things in my life that are either are creative or that I want to log or write about or draw or whatever in a creative way. I've got some photos that I need to print out. So this is a post-it note and I took a little piece of paper from here because see, this is where I'm writing. I Yesterday, I ended up just writing it on the thing, but this is where I'm writing my word count. And this is the book, one of the books that I'm reading about writing your book because this is about nonfiction. And so I may end up drawing this and putting it in this journal. Where? Show me. Right here. That's rose quartz. I have one of those. You have one of those? But it way, way far. But I bring it to here. Yeah? Okay. And it pink, but not way big. Not. You want some? Yeah, I want a toilet. You want a what color? Toilet. So, what do we need? Whoa, we don't want them to break. Oh, you know what Mimi has? Those are zoo. This is hearts and stars. Diamond flower. That is that, that stuff. Are these, are some of these are mine and yours. For me and you. Yeah. And we only can do, and can we do a dumb flower ourselves? Okay. Now, we got to get your sketchbook, right? Oh, you want to put your stuff in the book bag for you? Well, I have a bag. No, it's a rose quartz. How about a purple one? Yeah. You like that one? Yeah. Or you want a white one? I want two. Two? We are way, way, way special. They are very special. Now I have four. You want something to put them in. You want to use Mimi's um, notebook? I, I don't think it's going to fit in there. Why is this guy oh. laying down? Here, put those in there. And... I am. And what, what was that person you were holding? Here you go. That's the perfect Selena size, right? Do you need a pencil? Yeah. Okay. And what else do we need? You don't know. Okay. You need your purses. <laughs> Those are things with pins. And I think this might be all. Oh, I need watercolor. Watercolor? Yes. What? We're going to need the watercolor. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need yours, right? Yeah. Okay, your little one is in my bedroom. Okay. Um, and we're going to need your brushes. So let's get the brushes. <laughs> we're messy again, you know. <laughs> we're messy? I mean, this one will work. That way you got, you got some different ones, right? Now. What else? We need, what else do we need? What's the black thing? Huh? What's the black thing right here? What black thing? This? Yeah. It's Mimi's uh, little notepad. What do you have these pens? Here. Okay. I think you need these pens. There's a, see that green bag? We can put this whole thing in that green bag. What? I don't want to. You can carry this? Yeah, but it's hard to sit that for me. You want to put your piece of gum, your extra piece of gum in there? Or you want you want your piece of gum now? I want my piece of gum. Okay, Mimi will put you an extra piece in there, okay? okay. Okay, can you carry that? Alright, now I gotta get those bags and that box, okay? Um, can you carry that box for me? Um, I gotta carry all these. 
And this might be Henry's song.